Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Jonah Shaw about High Town season two dropping October seventeenth on Stars. Welcome to the show. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's always exciting when, you know, you shoot a show and then it's going to be finally out. What's that mindset comparison like for you actually going to work on it and now come before the storm before it kind of drops? What's that difference like for you? I am so excited because, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I shot Hightown um, for several months, like end of last year, early this year. And it was such a blast working with such an amazing, um, talented cast and crew. Mm -hmm. And to get to see it all come together and get to share that with the world is so exciting. So this Sunday, October 17th, season two drops. My favorite thing about the show is, and I think TV is kind of going this direction right now because the writing is, ju is just amazing. But like the mm -hmm. complexity of a lot of these characters and the misunderstood aspect of things. Did you notice that right away when you kind of dived into the scripts and everything? Absolutely. One thing that um, really drew me to uh, this show was just how complex and flawed every single character is. Pretty much. And I think it's very relatable. You know, I think this pr social media can care, can make it seem like, oh, everyone's lives are so perfect, but we're only sharing our highlights a lot of times. Right. And that's not real. And so I love that the show doesn't shy away from showing what's real exploring uh, themes of like addiction, possibility of redemption, sobriety. Um, so they're just real topics and handled um, so beautifully. It definitely tackles so. a lot of things. And I feel like the, the story goes different kind of directions. Um, what do you kind of feel also about, we talked about the character aspect of it, but if mm -hmm. we kind of talk about kind of the storylines and everything, um, what was it like being part of a show also that has like kind of roller coaster of emotion storylines where you're not really sure where it's going to kind of go a little bit, Jonah. Yeah. I <laughs> even, you know, being a part of the show, every script I was like, I was, I'd read it. I'm like, Oh my gosh. I, I <laughs> so was like constantly like what's going to happen. And I was very surprised by a lot of the twists and turns that uh, you guys will see across the season. So I'm really pumped for audiences to get to, be on that roller coaster journey along with our characters. And you get to see a lot of different sides of, you know, Renee and Frankie um, and uh, like Jackie's characters. So it's really fun to dive into even more in season two. Oh, absolutely. Storytelling acting, I mean, diff people have different paths in terms of like how they get there. Can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about your path in terms of how you kind of got, like, did you always know you want to do storytelling and acting? <laughs> Uh, well, when I was 12 years old, I took an acting class. It was rap and stiltskin. Uh, I had to perform rap and stiltskin, which is the rapping version of rumble stiltskin. And uh, <laughs> me attempting to rap is like a funny, funny thing. And I realized I really love making people laugh and yeah. feel. And so growing up, film and TV was something that was like a refuge for me, taught me a lot of lessons in life, um, helped me, you know, escape sometimes from the realities of the world and, and kind of learn more about the world. So yeah, my passion for acting started pretty young. Absolutely. It's interesting too, where it's funny with like this show and everything. I mean, you kind of have an idea sometimes or like that you want to kind of be in this creative realm of things, but sometimes you just never know, which I find funny too. <laughs> True. <laughs> Which is interesting. Um, we're talking about Hightown. You also did a voice in Rise of the Last Dragon on Disney+. Plus. I mean, um, did you want to be able... I mean, obviously, you know, Jonah Shaw goes where the opportunities go. But it's pretty <laughs> cool that you're able to work on, like a, like, a variety of different projects as well. Have you thought about that lately as well? Yeah, I'm really grateful to, <laughs> to have gotten to work, you know, on uh, just a, a very wide a variety of work. Um and I think each of them empowers the world in a different way. So yep. it's really great to be part of projects um, that are so meaningful to people. Like I think Raya and the Last Dragon came out at a time where it was like the perfect time in the world where we could really use some unity and coming together. And that's a lot of the themes um, of Raya and the Last Dragon. Um, I have noticed that across the different roles I've been playing as of late, um, 
I've been playing more like villainous characters <laughs> or seemingly villainous. And so it's been fun to, to understand and really dive in deep to like why, what motivates someone to do the things that they do. And I, I think that all action is done with a positive intent, no matter how crappy the action actually is. And so it's helped me be more empathetic. Well, it's really interesting because, you know, there's so many amazing shows all over the globe right now because of streaming services. Like we're getting content from all over the place, which is unbelievable. And it's one of my favorite things. And there are shows, there are shows that have these like really bad villainous characters in it that they there's like misunderstood aspects to it like why are they this certain way right like are you right. kind of look at <laughs> but like exactly. some of them are really bad <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> you know what i mean like it's kind of like well you can play devil's advocate or kind of try to find a silver lining but some of them are just kind of like thrown in this situation where they're the villain and that's yeah, it yeah. <laughs> This is true. Uh, I I played like a super villain on The Flash recently, and mine was like a unique super villain. It was Rainbow Raider, and she was kind of like a Robin Hood. So it was hard to not root for her. But that's <laughs> interesting. Yo, know, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, but I'm not talking about that. That that's kind of like. But I'm talking nicer. about you. You the watch shows where they're just like villains. they're just like a bad villain, like a bad like a Joffrey. <laughs> Good Joffrey. <laughs> exactly. Um, no, it's interesting. Well, no, there's a show called Young Royals on Netflix from Sweden, and there's a character named August, and he's just it's about like like a, a like a a young adult um, series about like school and relationships. They're just one character who's just like really bad, <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's just interesting to me as well. Um, people are gonna get to dive into High Town season two very soon what are you hoping they get out of it when they watch season two jonah have you thought about that yet because it's it's it, they're gonna be able to see it pretty soon yeah um obviously the amazing adventure that is season two and, and getting to enjoy that but also just um connecting with these uh imperfect characters and um no matter what someone's dealing with you know the as i mentioned the show deals a lot with addiction and sobriety that there's that hope for redemption. And I hope despite the grittiness of the show that they are left with hope and a belief that change is possible um, for anyone, especially themselves. Absolutely. It's it's interesting too, um, where kind of like I talked about the global aspect of things. I mean, um, a lot of self-reflection was done during the pandemic. Are you realizing that we're also in a special age of content because of the global access? Like, is that something that stands out to you as well? I mean, we talked about the quality of the storytelling and the scripts and everything, but the global access of content, the fact that your projects can be watched all over the planet instantly blows my mind a little bit. It's it's awesome just how uh, how far of a reach we really have um, in ter- terms of the world right now. So I think the pandemic has really brought us together um, to unify against you know this um, this global pandemic. And so in doing so, I think we're seeing content that also reflects um, this desire for unity and connectivity in the mm-hmm. world. And what I'm really hoping is that there's maybe this is too idealistic, but that there's less us versus them, that we're all at the end of the day people and we're way more similar than we are different. Absolutely. It's always hard to do interviews like this because I mean, we I, the show's not out. We both kind of know what's going to happen and everything, but like, do, um, can you, before we wrap up, tell us a little bit about what we can expect with your character without sure. kind of diving into spoilers. I'm sure there's a way we could do that. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, so I play Daisy who uh, works at the strip club run by Renee and mm-hmm. Frankie. And um, I end up, <laughs> my boyfriend ends up being um, Luis Guzman's character, who's the bad cousin of Frankie Cuevas. So now the Cuevas cousins are stirring up a lot of trouble. Bad with guys, the right? Trip. Villains. <laughs> yeah, bad guys. And Daisy kind of gets entangled um, with, you know, Jorge. And Jorge uh, is, Luis Guzman plays like the most charming psychopath <laughs> you can imagine. He's done that and in so, other roles as well. I feel like he's got that, <laughs> that yeah, down. He's brilliant. So yeah. he's hilarious and also dangerous. And Daisy gets wrapped up in all that. And so, 
she helps stir up a lot of trouble for our beloved leads. Absolutely. No, it's great. I'm, I'm so excited for people to see it. I want to thank you so much for taking some time to chat with me on thank Popternative. You. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So, yeah, uh, October 17th, season two of Hightown on Stars. Where can people follow you on social media to keep up date with everything? Uh, sure. At Jonah Shao, J O N A X I A O. Amazing. Well, this has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Look out for Jonah Shao in a season two of Hightown dropping on stars. Until next time, this is Jonah and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.